The Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to our service of worship on this Maundy Thursday. That strange word, Maundy, <laughs> is taken from the words in John 13, where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. I give you a new commandment, is what Jesus says. The Latin term, mandatum, where we get mandi from, was applied to the rite of foot washing on this day, which Jesus commanded us to do for one another. Mandate meaning command. And Jesus commanded us to, do, to love one another, to love all people, as he showed us how this night. All of this took place leading into the meal we call the Lord's Supper, the Last Supper, communion. Today we gather at many tables in many homes to remember that meal so long ago when Jesus gathered with his dearest friends, his disciples. We remember the wilderness around us, physical separation, quarantine, the violence of white supremacy, illness, unemployment, deployment of healthcare workers, fear, uncertainty, grief. We also remember the wilderness to come for Jesus, betrayal, denial by his closest friends, suffering, and death. We hope you brought with you a bowl of warm water <laughs> and some towels to join in a time of hand washing, along with something to eat and drink. It really can be whatever you have around to share in this meal of communion together. And if you don't happen to have those items, that's okay. Uh, you're welcome here nonetheless, a part of the family. Tonight, let us be held by community, shaped by Christ's love and filled by God's grace. Let us center our hearts on our foot washing, meal sharing, boundary breaking Jesus, as we meditate on this prelude from our church musician, Teresa Schumacher. Now I'd like to invite Darcy to lead us in our call to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. Do you remember your last supper before the pandemic? The last meal you had out at a restaurant with friends? The last meal before fear and anxiety ran the conversation? If you had known it was your last, would you have lingered? Would you have ordered dessert? Would you have held your friend's hands? and told them how much you loved them? If you had known, would you have washed their feet? 
Tonight we gather together because this night was the beginning of the end. This night was Jesus' last supper with his disciples. Take a moment to imagine how Jesus must have felt. Friends, with all of this in mind, I invite you to join me in our opening words. Tonight, we will hear again and again of a love that knows no bounds. May we be fully present here. May we worship holy God. I now invite you to sing along with us hymn number 506, Look Who Gathers at Christ's Table. the crucifixion, the more earnest our prayers of confession feel. For we know that what was done to Jesus, betrayal, humiliation, violence, and death are things we do to each other all the time. So with all earnestness, a sense of urgency, and a deep hope, our transformation, we return to a confessing prayer once again, trusting that the God who holds the stars in the sky is holding all of us tonight. People of God, let us confess our sins together. Holy, Holy God, God who holds, holds us together, together. If, if I, I were to place, place myself, myself at your table, table I would probably be Peter, 
misunderstanding your radical hospitality, sticking to the rules, arguing what I do and don't deserve. Then again, again, it's it's possible that I'd be Judas, the one who betrayed you, the one who failed to see the good right in front of him, the one who might have thought he wasn't worthy of your love. If I were were to to place myself at your table, it's it's possible possible I would be one of the unnamed disciples, watching but not not speaking, silently missing the opportunity to tell you what I believe and how much I love you. If I were to place myself at your table, I am confident that I would have made the same mistakes your well-intentioned disciples made. There is no surprise there. What is surprising is that I know you would have washed my feet nonetheless. So forgive me, God. Wash not just my feet, but my hands and my head also. Amen. Family of faith, Jesus knew that Peter would deny. He knew that Judas would betray, and he knew the disciples would hide in fear. And still, and still, he invited them in. He washed their feet and he fed them. Friends, we worship the living Christ whose love shocks, surprises, and far exceeds our understanding of love. So may this story tonight remind us, no matter who we are, no matter where we go, no matter how great our mistakes or regrets are in life, we will always be invited in and held together by the living God. Again and again and again, we are forgiven. Again and again and again, we are held. Amen. Amen. We now invite Darcy to lead us in our prayer for illumination and our communal reading of the scripture text tonight. Holy God, scripture tells us there was a lot of shouting on your crucifixion day. The crowds were yelling, take him away, crucify him. This man claims he is king of the Jews. And Mary cried out in grief and you cried out in pain. It seems there was a lot of shouting 2000 years later and we're still shouting and the world is still filled with violence. The air feels so full of words, so full of hurt. I imagine you know the feeling. So today we ask that you quiet us in this moment, quiet our minds, quiet our insecurities and our distractions, quiet our fears, Quiet us to hear your voice and speak to us now. We're listening. Amen. Join us now as we read selected words from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. I will read the unbold text, and you are invited to join me for the words in bold. It was the day before the Passover festival. Jesus and his disciples were sharing the evening meal. Jesus got up from the table, took off his robes, and tied a towel around his waist. Then Jesus poured water into a wash basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel he was wearing. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered Peter, You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Peter declared, Never at any time will you wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I do not wash your feet, you will no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered, Lord, not only my feet then, but my hands and head too. Jesus said, 
Those who have bathed are completely clean and do not need to wash other than their feet. After washing their feet, Jesus put his robes back on, returned to his place at the table and said, do you understand what I have done for you? You called me teacher, you call me teacher and Lord and you speak correctly because I am. If I, your Lord and teacher have washed your feet, you too must watch each, wash each other's feet. I have set an example for you so that you will do just what I have done for you. It's time to wash our hands together. Depending on your home and family context, this ritual might be somber or joyful, serious and gentle or playful. There's no wrong way to do this. God meets us where we are. So join me now in our words of washing. Water has always been a sign of creation, life, birth, and rebirth. We remember the water of baptism, a symbol of our dying and rising in Christ. Tonight, at Christ's invitation, we share this water of service and love. With this water, let us bless one another and wash each other's hands. I now invite you to take turns washing and drying our hands, your hands or one another's hands. As you wash your hands or your neighbor's hands, say, may this water renew and restore your spirit. You'll see that line towards the bottom of your screen. Then once you've washed the hands, gently dry them saying, may you dwell in God's tender care. Let's go through this practice together, embraced by the waters of our baptism. Let us go ahead and repeat those words at the bottom of our screen, speaking them to one another. May this water renew and restore your spirit. May you dwell in God's tender care. I invite you now to join me as we sing our next hymn, number 490 in your hymnal, Wash, O God, Your Sons and Daughters.
Now is the time to gather before you whatever you brought to eat and drink for communion. It can be anything that you have available. And I invite you now as we approach this time at the table to join me in our opening words. Tonight we remember the last night Jesus spent with his disciples celebrating the Passover meal. We remember, remember that, that the, the early church, church would gather for agape meals or love feasts to remember Jesus' life and ministry, to, to affirm their communal identity as the body of Christ, and to share food and resources so everyone would have enough. Our worship centers around this meal. This table is for all who are hungry. If you are hungry, Come, where, where compassion and love are, there is God. The love of Christ has gathered us as one. Let us love one another. Where, where compassion, compassion and love are, there is God. When we are gathered in spirit, even distance cannot separate us. Christ is present in our midst. Where compassion and love are, there is God. In this meal and worship, may we feel the joy that is community, the peace that is Christ, and the presence that is spirit. Amen. Here, Here we are at the table. table. We come hungry for food and drink, for company and conversation, for God's spirit of hope, comfort, and peace. Jesus gathered around tables like this one. He gathered with sinners and saints, religious leaders and tax collectors, the proud and arrogant, the self-deprecating and uncertain, the filthy rich and the destitute, the healthy and the sick, the young and the old. We remember the last meal that Jesus shared with his disciples, a meal remembering God's liberating power. Join me now as we prepare to share this meal together using the words we are so accustomed to saying in preparation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. At this time, we would invite you to make sure your screen's in gallery view instead of speaker view, which just means that you can see lots of people in your church family. Um, that'll make it feel just a little bit more like we're gathered around a table together. <laughs> As we lift and break the food, we would invite you to do the same. And then we'll eat the food together at that time. Same with the cup. As we lift the cup up, whatever it is, uh, we would invite you to lift yours up too. And then we'll drink it together in that moment. People of God, let's share this meal together. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, gathered with his friends around the table. And he took some bread. So everyone grab your bread or bread-like item. Any food. <laughs> and Jesus gave thanks to God, and he broke the bread. If you have something breakable, you can rip it in half now. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jesus gave the bread to his disciples, saying, take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
So I invite you to go ahead and partake of the food on your own or with the people you are sheltering with. And as you eat it, say to yourself or to your neighbor, the bread of life. Pastor Liz, the bread of life. Pastor, the bread of life. In the same way, probably as people were still chewing their food, <laughs> Jesus took the cup and he lifted it. If you've got a cup, you can lift it with us. <laughs> and while still sitting around with his friends, his disciples, he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Every single time you drink it, do so remembering me. So let's drink whatever we have, uh, either on our own or together, saying the cup of salvation. I like that Tanya and Jody with the cheers. That was perfect. <laughs> I imagine they did that around the table. I think so too. <laughs> Friends, the cup of salvation. Dexter, the cup of salvation. Liz, the cup of salvation. Beloved family in the faith, every single time that we have this meal together, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Join us now as we sing together our closing song. Number 300, <laughs> we are one in the spirit. Another name for this song is, they'll know we are Christians by our love. I invite you to join me now in our responsive benediction. We are each a tapestry of stories. We are our stories of fear and grief, 
as well as our stories of love and joy. We believe that God sees all of these interwoven truths and says to our fragile selves, Come, come in. in. Come, come in, in from, from the cold. cold. Come, come in, in from, from the rain. rain. Come, come in, in from wherever, wherever you are and be here tonight. We believe that God then pours warm water into a basin to wash off the weariness of the day, the bruises of the past, and the doubt that clings to us. We believe that this act is an act of love. Similarly, we believe that God says to us, eat, and God shares of God's self. And it is food not only for our bodies, but for our souls. We believe that all this happens every time we close our eyes and imagine God. And every time we close our eyes and imagine God, we believe the parts of our tapestry that feel worn and frayed are held together. So today we remember, today we say thank you. Today we know we are held together. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship and friendship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us wherever we are today and always. Amen. Amen. We invite you to linger in the beauty and the heartbreak of this washing and this meal as the music of the postlude washes over us. And you're welcome to stay for a brief time of fellowship after the service. We also want to remind you and invite you to join us on this same Zoom link tomorrow at 7 p.m. for our Good Friday service, a Stations of the Cross liturgy that helps us reflect on the way our black and brown siblings continue to be crucified on the crosses of our American legal system. We invite you to bring a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. We're so glad that you have been worshiping with us tonight.